Greetings everyone, this is Pato and Antoinette and we're glad to be here today to share with you about our trip to Asia. So many people have been asking us about, you know, why we went, what happened, why we was there and what was the outcome. So we'd like to just, you know, just have a recap. Sounds good. Yeah and just share. Antoinette probably remembers more than me, so, <laughs> but I'm just starting the ball rolling. Um, basically, a good friend of us, Guy Jameson, asked us, you know, um, what was our plans as far as international outreach, and we shared it with him. And um, he inspired us and encouraged us and helped us to do our trip to Asia, which was a trip to Japan. Taiwan and Korea. Taiwan and Korea. So um, we, we decided that we was going to make it happen. Um, our main intention was just to go over there on a spiritual mission to spread the good news, which is our first priority, um, to make new friends and to share the Urantia book and to see if there's anyone over there who would like to continue spreading the teachings of the book and share the book with new people. So. Um, we started our trip in Japan. You want to yeah. tell everyone what happened? Well, basically, we started in Tokyo. We had a fellow reader named Justin Reed who was already studying the Urantia book in Tokyo, and he introduced us to a woman named Michiko. She came and arrived and picked us up from the airport and basically became our tour guide for the entire week. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time with her discussing the Urantia book and the different teachings of the, of the book and did a lot of sightseeing and, and understanding a little bit more about the culture of Japan, especially since Pato has never been there before. One of the things that we realize is that when you're dealing with a type of society where religion is not very as prominent as how it is out here in the West, we had to understand what it is more about the people and understand where they were coming from and see where they were at. <laughs> So what's with the incense? Well, uh, they say this smoke mm -hmm. purify your body and make your body healthy and healthier. Okay. Mm -hmm. so many people want to do the smoke to mm -hmm. get smarter. Smarter, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> get incense spot though <laughs> so Michiko uh, has become our tour guide and we were having study sessions and study groups with her she became inspired that she wanted to place the Urantia book inside the National Library of the entire country that is quite an amazing feat considering that there are thousands of libraries all across Japan but the National Library is the one official library where you can get all of the text that all the important documents from all over Japan as well as foreign books and publications that they deem is worthy to be placed mm -hmm. inside the National Library. This was quite an amazing feat that she was able to pull it off when we went down there to actually place the book in the library, they were introduced <laughs> to Patobantan, which made them kind of curious, and he also gave them some music. They were very happy to sit there and receive the music that they said they were also placing his music inside the National Library. So I think that is really quite an honor to sit there and see the Urantia book placed in the National Library, to see Pato's music also placed in the library, in a place, and they said it will be there as long as the library is still standing. And, and also, you can't just put a book in the library. You have to apply, you have to make an application, has to get processed and you have to get approved. And it has to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it was a, a really great accomplishment for us to place the book in the library. The other thing that was really exciting about the trip to Japan, which we never planned, was that you know once we let the, the reggae community know that we were coming over to Japan, we were invited to do um, some shows um, by different reggae promoters and bands in all three countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a really great time performing at these shows and also talking to people at the concerts about the Urantia book and the bands 
that we worked with, we also introduced them to the Urantia book. Um, we, we did a rehearsal session mm -hmm. with um, Itak Tojo and his band. Yeah, that was very surprising considering that we didn't know that we were actually going to be working with the band. But there they were, ready to rehearse <laughs> and do the show. <laughs> well, it was amazing because um, they, they, they had studied some of the music. So we met these guys for the first time and were rehearsing. And after the rehearsal, which went down very, very well, and they were all Rastas. This is an entire band of Rast Japanese Rastafarians. So Pato basically asked them the question, are you spiritual or religious? And their answers were quite fascinating. And they all had different reactions to the question. And I also asked them, what, what um, are the techniques or what are the tools we need for spiritual growth? Yes. Um, that was one of the themes that we, we um, carried across to every country as well during our discussions at, at the spiritual gatherings. And um, it was always interesting that, you know, everyone had a different approach to spiritual growth. Um, and then when we shared um, the Urantia's point of view, it was like a revelation mm -hmm. for them to know that, you know, service and prayer and meditation is such a crucial part um, of the secret of spiritual growth. <laughs> I think what's, what's very fascinating as well, too, is that they're not used to having these types of conversations just across the board in general. No. So they were, were kind of like impressed, like, wow, you're really going to ask me that question? Like, mm -hmm. you know, what I think about Casually. spirituality and God and stuff, and you're just going to come out with it just like that? Yeah. And, and it was good because they did want to share and they did want to talk about, but nobody ever brought it to them and asked them before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 私たちは家族です okay. We are family yeah. One of the things I loved about Japan as well was, was this mm -hmm. The whole Asia trip really When people bow, uh, it just, it's just so respectful to me And I enjoyed doing it to everybody I met Because it was like I was just mm -hmm. given an opportunity to just show everybody respect I think one of the other fun things about um, the Japan thing we did, the first show we did, um, we didn't have the band, it was a sound system show. Mm -hmm. And um, great promoter, great people, great family. Um, and um, Antoinette was talking to a group of different people around the table while I was resting before the show. Mm -hmm. And um, she told me how excited she was to talk to these people about their different beliefs and different aspects of belief. And then I went on stage and did the show and unknowing to me, one of the guys that Antoinette was talking to came up to me all emotional and says that one of the songs I did made Which was him, acapella, which was Love is the Greatest Thing, Love is the Greatest without Thing, without no music. music, just acapella. <laughs> so it came up to me and says it made him cry. Mm -hmm. Now I had no idea, but this guy had just told Antoinette that he was an agnostic. Yes. That he, he, he wasn't sure about God. So I gave him a Urantia book and mm -hmm. says, you know something, I'm giving you this book. And I want you to keep feeling what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And he went online and did a whole write-up. He did a blog, yeah. He did a huge, beautiful blog about his experience with us and his experience during the show and the Urantia book. So, you know, I think Japan was a really, mm -hmm. a huge success, mm -hmm. a beautiful experience. We reestablished some of the Urantians, their faith. Um, created some new Urantians and just ignited a lot of new spiritual growth in people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, just really great to know that music can bring people together yeah. and put them in the right mood to, mm -hmm. to open their minds for spiritual receptivity. You know? It's true. It's a great thing. So after that... We hopped on a plane and flew to Taipei, Taiwan, where we met this other guy named Thomas Hugh through another Urantia friend of ours, through another third party friend, uh -huh. who's, uh, Russ McClay is actually another U Urantia student who's been living in Taiwan for about 29 years. And through a mutual friend, we had met another guy who actually had a ska band in Taipei. What are the chances of that, of having a ska <laughs> band in Taipei? So he meets us at the airport and we're just uh -huh. meeting for the first time. And uh, he's showing us around. He's taking very, very good care of very us. Very good care of now, us. Now, everywhere we're going, they are taking very good care of us. Like if they were picking up their brother or yeah. their sister or something Family. without even meeting them for the first time. So 
We start working with this band as well, and we ask some of the what same questions. Scarioke. Scarioke. <laughs> excellent band, excellent people. But um, again, we did the same thing. They were able to put on a show at the base of Tiger Mountain in Taiwan. This is amazing because this is like a festival with expats, foreigners, mm -hmm. Taiwanese people. It was a wide diversity Very and multitude diverse. of different ideas, faiths, and beliefs all gathered together at one concert. But that amount of love, when you ask them to sit there, everybody just turn to each other and hug each other and show some love. They loved it. But it was a very great experience and a lot of people left with the Urantia book. And we left a couple with Russ yeah. McClay. And it's, what's interesting as well is that I met quite a, we met quite a few of Russ's friends and introduced them to the Urantia book mm -hmm. <laughs> or left them with a book. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Russ is going to be able to start a study group there soon because a lot of his circle of um, English teachers have now mm -hmm. um, picked up the book. And that was the other interesting thing about Japan. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Urantians, they were actually English teachers as well. Yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Then, after I ate all the strange and exciting food at the night markets in Taiwan, <laughs> we flew off to Korea. And as you can mm -hmm. see, I'm wearing the traditional Korean style dress called the hanbok, which I was dying to get one. I've been running all over Korea to make sure that I was going to get one. Very <laughs> beautiful. And uh, Byung who was our contact in, in Korea. He's also a Urantia student, but there's a lot more Urantia students in Korea since that revelation has already hit Korea before it has hit Taiwan and hit Japan. He organized a concert on the steps of the Sejong Center right in the middle of the capital in, in, um, in Seoul, Korea. Now, Sejong Center is a very, very big center. The palace is right across the street. Mm -hmm. The Admiral Yi statue, King Sejong statue is right there. It's like anybody who goes anywhere yes. is going to see all of this that's happening. Very it's going to pass side. right through there. So here we are. We're going to do our concert. We're going to spread some good news. We're going to do some outreach. We're going to perform on the steps of Sejong Center in front of whoever just is going to pass by. Now the interesting thing is, too, since this is a government place, you have to get permission, you have to go mm -hmm. through red tape, it's not an easy task no. to sit there and say, you know, I want to go out there, because they don't like propaganda, and there's always propaganda always going on out there. Especially in Korea. Especially in Korea. And because of the religious connotations. Tensions. Right. Because they're <laughs> always out there protesting or, or sharing or, you know, spreading whatever they're kind of spread. They don't want any of that on their steps. So they made it pretty, pretty clear, you know, how careful that we need to be about how we're going to sit the there and C do our show. The CEO, actually, of the Sejong Center called me mm -hmm. and Byung mm -hmm. into his office, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was a big deal because you have all these areas of the Sejong Center office departments, but we, the, the guy who we had been speaking to was mm -hmm. very nervous. Mm -hmm. And he says, my boss wants to, to see you. And I'm like, the CEO wants to see us? He's like, yes. So we had to go around these corridors, up this elevator, like to the penthouse. And the CEO welcomed us in and, and the, his assistants all shaking, nervous. <laughs> and he's like, so, um, what are you doing here? <laughs> and so I had to explain what I was doing there. They must have done some research to, re to know that I, I am a spiritual person. Um, but they, they had some concerns that I was going to use this opportunity to, to, as a platform for religious propaganda. I, I assured them that that was not my intention, that I am a reggae artist with a mission, um, with a positive message, and that I would be uplifting the people with positivity and not trying to convert anybody to any religion. So um, he, he felt satisfied with that and told us that the show would go on. The, his assistant told me that he would have preferred to have just cancelled the show. But mm -hmm. his boss was 
being very, very nice and lenient. Mm -hmm. And the assistant watched the whole show mm -hmm. and loved it. At the yes. end, he ran down the stairs and gave me a big hug. I know, which is very kind of not, mm -hmm. you know, because in Asian society, you know, hugging is not like really a big thing. You know, they'd but rather it just- It was a great show on the mm -hmm. steps. We had so many families walking uh -huh. by that just stopped, sat down, started singing along to the music. Mm -hmm. Covering the spectrum of life Ultraviolet rays of love Help us through our troubles and strife Invisible showers, yeah Rain down and touch us each day I feel it in my heart and soul And I know it's true when I say Love will carry us through The weather was beautiful, it was a beautiful day we had a large number of the Urantia community mm -hmm. based in Korea turn up. Yes. We had like four boxes of Urantia books <laughs> delivered to the steps <laughs> at the end of the show. Uh, but we told everybody, come next door to the cafe where we can discuss the Urantia book and, and share um, this new revelation with you. But going back to our arrival in Korea, I want to say thank you to Byung Jil So. Mm -hmm. Who, who came to the airport and picked us up and just took care of us for the whole trip. Yeah. He, he gave us sightseeing tours. reminds me of my tours. uncle. Remember yeah. the whole time I was like, he reminds me of my uncle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. But um, we had a great time with him. He drove two hours every day to our hotel to pick us up, yes. take us around. Mm -hmm. Anything we needed to do, he was right there for us. Mm -hmm. Also, Kim. Mm -hmm, David Kim. David Kim. We want to say thank you to David Kim as well for the love mm -hmm. and hospitality. Mm -hmm. And um, to the band, you know, to the musicians mm -hmm. in Korea who, who backed us. Oh, know. Jong Sok. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jong mm -hmm. Sok and all the crew. Mm -hmm. And what's his name, the reggae artist? Josh Roy. Yes. <laughs> and his beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. and, and for the newspaper reporter that took me on the bike. And the newspaper <laughs> reporter that did a write-up in the um, Korean Times mm -hmm. and, and also mentioned um, that we, would, we are Urantia book readers and talked about the Urantia book in the, in, the, um, in the newspaper. That's probably what caused some of the problems at the Sejong Center too. <laughs> but um, that but was, it was great a, considering he was an atheist. Yeah, that was an awesome write-up, my brother. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you when we come back yeah. over there in 2017. But, you know, um, we, we had um, two major conferences with the Urantia community while we was there. There's a lot of conflict going on in Korea. Um, but when we got together with all of them, we actually found a solution to end the conflicts. And um, it was a beautiful meeting, you know, the last meeting we had with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they all started hugging each other and, and decided and committed to working towards a united future. Mm -hmm. um, we, we met a lot of new readers. Yes. And, and who were very excited about the book and were excited to meet us and excited about the future of the Urantia book in Korea. And I think that whole trip to Korea was very, very successful, not just in, in, in sharing the good news that we're all God's children, brothers and sisters, and sharing the Urantia book, but also the fact that we, we were able to help a community that has been so divided for so long to come together in unity and with hope of a brighter future. There is a brighter future because I do understand, you know, the language barrier is such a difficult thing. The Rancher book is a very difficult book to read in itself. The Chinese language is very difficult. The Japanese language is difficult. Mm -hmm. The Korean language is difficult. And how to be able to tie this all in together where everybody can still kind of gain a basic understanding is going to be quite a dutiful task. Yes. But I do see a lot coming from this. And, and I definitely see a lot of hope in the future as well too because right now Asia is very ripe and very open to new ideas on spirituality and spiritual growth. And they're open ideas to, you know, of the West already. So it's not just a secular or just a materialistic time for everyone because they want to sit there and broaden and expand their horizon mm -hmm. it's a good time for us all mm -hmm. yeah I, I just want to end by saying um, I'm 
I want to end by saying, you can wrap up at the end if you, if you want to, but I want to end by saying, for me, the key to our success in the UK, in Africa, and now in Asia, um, has been the fact that we, we're bringing music yes. with a message. Mm -hmm. Through this music, this vehicle of music, we are able to meet so many people who are open-minded, who are loving, who appreciate our talent. And because of, the, because of all of those elements, they are open. They're, they're, they're open-hearted and open-minded to us sharing spiritual liberty, spiritual growth, love, you know, and unity. Our main mission is to make friends, number one, to expand our spiritual family. And for those who want to know about advanced truth, we are in a position to share that with them. And I think those are the key components to why me and Antoinette's missions around the world are so successful, primarily because we are coming from a, a musical viewpoint and um, music is our vehicle that we're using to travel. I think also I couldn't do this the way I'm doing it without my partner, <laughs> without Antoinette. Um, she, she handles so much on a social side of meeting people, remembering their names, finding ways of linking in so that they can stay in touch with us. Um, that, that aspect is amazing. I'm more of the direct talk to the people um, get make sure everything's organized right but Antoinette really is a social butterfly that really makes this such a cohesive um, enterprise that we're doing so I just want to say thank you to Antoinette thank you I want to say thank you to everyone that we we've, we've met on our journey everyone that has been supporting us on our travels and all of our friends fans and family in the USA who continue to encourage us and support us in any way that they can we really appreciate it. Yes, I guess only just to add to that about the, the success of it with, is through music. Because remember the drummer that you gave the Urantia book to, if anybody else gave it to him, if they even got to that point, the whole reason why he was crying when you gave him the book was because it was you that gave him the book. Mm -hmm. And I think <laughs> <laughs> it's like anybody could give somebody a book or something, but the fact that it was you that gave him the book. And I, I with the musicians and the other people, it's like, okay, now that they've met you, now that they've talked to you, and now that they feel like they are now your friend, and they're part of your inner circle and part of your family, they say, well, this is something that's very close and personal to me, and I'd like to be able to share it with you. It's such a great honor for them to sit there and receive that. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that I realized that we, now that we've stayed in touch with so many of them, that since we even came back to the States, we've actually linked up with yes. James from Taiwan yeah. and Gary from Taiwan, mm -hmm. you know, because they happen to be in the States and they called us up and they let us know that they were going to be around. And so we're also going to be linking up with some of those English guys as well too when they come out here to the States when yeah. they have a visit. I think another thing about the drummer as well though, when he started crying, mm -hmm was that he had been a fan from childhood. Yes. But he also said that him and his friend in Brazil were looking for something. We're looking for the next level of truth. Mm -hmm. They were looking for something. And they said that. that there was something that they needed to find, which was the next level of truth. And, then and all something of a sudden, was making him stay in and, Taiwan. Yes, and he had been going through a state of depression. So mm -hmm. I counseled him before mm -hmm. I gave him the book. And then when I gave him the book, he was blown away. Mm -hmm. Because he said, this is the next level of truth that him and his friend have been talking about. He mm -hmm. didn't know where it was going to come from, but now he's got it. So It's amazing. Yeah, the trip, the trip was a success. We enjoyed it. I we made it. some great friends and we hope to go back again. Excited. So thank you to everybody. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Young generation. All right. Oh, yeah. I just, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to our Heavenly Father. And thank you for this family. And I hope that I can come back sometime again to, to see my brothers and my sisters here. I love you very, very much. Warrior, 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 warrior
Let's go.